Duncan's just fully immersing himself in the culture. Good morning, everyone. Today, we will be taking a golf cart all around Rome. Oh, this is good. This is good. Let's see. We'll be taking a Live Italy tour. Yahoo! <laughs> <laughs> so today we're working with Live Italy Tours. It was created by a friend of ours, and they are taking us all around Rome today in a golf cart. Are you excited about the golf cart? Yeah. What do you want to see here in Rome? Uh, I don't know. Coliseum. The Coliseum. Anyway, we have a lot to do today. Very excited. Let's get started. Oh my goodness. Are you guys ready to go? Uh -huh. This is going to be so much fun. I like that there's seat belts. Mm -hmm. so That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> if you move one seat over, you can drive. Did you get your license yet? You can't drive. This is John. He's going to drive us around today. How you doing? Welcome to Live Italy Tours. So they told us that we were going to be in a golf cart, and I was like, are we going to be in like two golf carts? How are they going to do this? Yeah. And we are basically in a limo golf cart. Like, oh, yeah. this is the biggest, fanciest golf cart I've ever been in. It's the Cadillac of golf carts right here. <laughs> and we totally do all fit comfortably, and I feel really safe. Like, we all have seat belts and stuff, which I don't think I've ever had in a golf cart. And it's working out really well. And Duncan's in a baby carrier. That's how they told us it would work with a baby. And we're going nice and slowly and just having a nice time looking at Rome. We can sneak into all the little alleyways this way. Oh, yeah. Well, that, how many? 2300. You can ask John any question you have, including yeah. how many steps, and he might know maybe the answer. Well, I don't know. I think they yeah. want to count them. Jacob, Jacob wants to count them. I want to count them. them. I want to count them. You want to count them? Can you hold my seat for me? <laughs> <laughs> is that an apricot pit? What is that? It's an apricot. Did you lose count? We just know it's 100 and... 100. 100 and 100? No, it's 100 and 100. No, it's 100. So you're not totally sure? Yeah. Should we go ask John? Yeah. Okay, let's go ask John. We just walked up all the Spanish steps, and now we're at the top of St. Pinzio Hill. It's a really pretty view. There's millions of these cobblestones all over Rome, but they have a name, and they're called San Pietrini, which means Little St. Peter's. The first place that they ever put these over 400 years ago was in the piazza in front of St. Peter's Church. And then the Pope liked them so much, he had them put in all the streets all over Rome. You see they're shaped like almost like a, a tooth, like if you see a molar. So when they go into the ground, they're like little wedges and they sit together. You like this, Duncan? I like this. <laughs> yeah, you like it? So we are at the Trevi Fountain and it's gorgeous. It's, it's like white and the water looks clean and I wasn't expecting that. I feel like usually when you see like older fountains and with so many people around it, you wouldn't imagine it to be so pristine, but it really is. It's over 250 years old, and it's at the end of what we call the aqueducts. Have you ever heard of the aqueducts? Yeah, you have? The water's been traveling 30 miles to get here. The Pope in the 1700s said, you know what we want to do? We want to build a really grand fountain to celebrate that this is the end of the aqueduct. So it is tradition when you come here to take a coin in your right hand, throw it over your left shoulder into the fountain, and make a wish to return to Rome someday. Now here's the catch to that. 
at the end of the week, they come in, they clean up all the coins. As I said, it's a beautiful fountain. There aren't a bunch of coins like filling it up. So they clean up the coins and they take in about $5,000 average per day. And they use 90% of that to give to charity and 10% goes to maintaining the fountain. So people wish to return to Rome and they also keep Rome nice and take care of the people and things in Rome with it. There we go, guys. Wow. You see it, Bailey? Parker, did you see it? Yeah. You see it? Up? Look up there. Are you passing it? No, we're going up to it. Yeah, this is, we're gonna stop it's here. So there were animal hunts in the morning. They actually would bring animals from all over the empire and have them fight each other or have hunters fight them. And then in the afternoon, they would have the gladiator fights. And these fights went on for over 450 years. Inside the Colosseum, you could have held 60,000 spectators, 60,000 people watching these games, and the games were for free. The Colosseum was built in the year 72. 72. And it only took eight years to build, which is incredible. And that eight years was to, to the third tier, right there, right kind of where my <laughs> hand is. And then this extra level was an addition later, but still totally amazing. And we're actually gonna go on a tour later of the inside of the Colosseum. So in an upcoming video, you'll get a whole bunch more details if you're interested in the Colosseum. It's so big, I can't even get the whole thing in the frame, it's so big. of the Roman emperors. Now, they look all rough and, and just made of brick, those arches now, but they would have been covered in white marble, colored columns, red, green, and yellow columns. Very palatial. Actually, you know what? The word palace comes from this hill that we're looking at right now. This hill is called the Palatinus, P-A-L-A, -A, and that's the same first four letters in the word palace, right? So imagine if you were an emperor, on one side of your palace you could see the Colosseum, and on the other side you could see the Circus Maximus, where they were having the chariot races here. I can't believe that this is where the chariot races used to happen, it's amazing. And they were like, they just got lost in like the wilderness and then they found land with the she-wolf and they, and they were like starving to death. And there is some truth to that. Yeah. Jesus and Remus were two twins from a land called Alba Longa. They had an evil uncle who wanted to kidnap the children because he wanted to take the throne. Queen Sylvia puts them in a basket and floats them down the Tiber River. Romulus and Remus, the babies in the basket, are found by a she-wolf named Lupa. And Lupa takes the babies to her cave, her den which was on the Palatine Hill. And then they were found by a shepherd who taught them language. Ramis and Remus grow up, but guess what? Brothers kind of get, and sisters kind of get into arguments sometimes, right? So Romulus says, I want to choose the Palatine Hill as the foundation of this new city. And Remus says, I want to choose the Aventine Hill. And that's where we're going to go next. One day they have this competition and Remus sees six birds, exactly, flying over his hill. Well, then Romulus, because Remus says, hey, I saw six birds. Well, Romulus says, well, you saw six birds first. Yeah, but I saw 12. So they consult the priests named augurs. And they say to the augurs, well, what means more? Who saw the birds first or how many birds there were? So they say how many birds there were. And so Romulus says, ah, that's great. So they selected me and my hill to be the new city. Romulus, he traces a sacred line around his city. And he says, you cannot cross this line without my permission because I'm gonna be the king of it. Guess who crosses the line? His brother Remus. They have a little war, and Remus ends up dying in that fight. And then Romulus declares himself the uncontended king of this new kingdom called Rome, exactly. Parker, are you in the front now? Uh-huh. Two,
I can see uh, something in the middle of it. That's the headquarters of the Catholic Church. But here's the coolest thing about the view. When you look through that hole, you're looking at three different countries. Isn't that where like the Pope lives? So yeah. that's its own country? That belly, dead on target right there. Yes, the Vatican's its own. Then we saw, no. we saw Italy. We saw the trees around the Tiber River. The Sovereign Military Order of Hospitaliers of oh. St. John of Jerusalem, Rhodes, and Malta. Wow. But they used to be based in Malta, but today they're based in Rome. They're just remembering all the places that they were once headquartered in the world. This organization that has hospitals, charitable organizations, started in the year 1048. So they're almost a thousand years old. Those two places within the country are considered their own territories in Rome. Isn't that crazy? It's a country within a city within a country. So many people waiting to see if they're honest or not. But we're deciding that it's too long of a line. We got a ton more to see, so we're gonna get back into the golf cart and check out the other sites. This is the spot where they suspect Julius Caesar was assassinated. And now it's a cat sanctuary. You can't see it anymore, but where those trees are, behind the temples, there was a building called the Curia, and that's where they asked Julius Caesar to come on the 15th of March, 44 BC, and preside over a meeting, over a law. So he came there, and that's where they pulled his toga up from uh, over his head from behind so he couldn't defend himself, and he was killed. He was stabbed. This was actually hidden until 1920. There were apartment buildings built over it and then they discovered it. Amazing. So if you are traveling around Rome, you will find these water fountains called Nazoni, which means big nose. <laughs> there are over 1,000 of them in the city and you can fill up a water bottle, you can stick your finger in the spout the way the kids are and it'll squirt up and if you don't have a water bottle, you can drink directly from it. So save some money, make sure you get a water bottle and just fill her up all day long. Or stick your finger up the nose. Yeah, stick your finger up the nose. This is Piazza Navona and it is huge and beautiful and apparently this is where they used to have games and competitions like uh, foot races and things like that. This used to be like a stadium for that and now it's just this beautiful place where people can come hang out Go to the shops enjoy some fountains uh, street performers also perform in here Which is cool to hear because I used to be a street performer It's funny to see the different creatures that everybody's fighting and who's fighting the creatures because like one is a little cherubim which looks like a baby and it's like fighting a lion and they're just very interesting. Bernini, we saw his fountain of the Triton before. Remember with the Triton blowing water out of the shell? Bernini had a rival named Borromini and Borromini built the church and Bernini built the fountain. So Bernini wanted to play a trick on his rival. And what did he do? He made the river Plata. What does he look like? What would you say, what kind of emotions going on in the sculpture? Scared. He's scared, exactly. He's terrorized. But what is he, what is he afraid of? What is he looking up at? Yes, he's looking up at the church. He's looking up at what his rival is building as if it's so poorly built that it might fall down on his amazing creation. So what Borromini does to get, you know, get right back at him, there's a sculpture right above us. Can you see her? Her name is St. Agnes. That's the name of the church. And St. Agnes is up there. What is she doing? She has her hand on her chest, throwing shade. She doesn't want to have anything to do with it. She's looking away at this disgusting sculpture that's going on below her in the piazza. So they're playing a joke on each other, but it's cast in stone. This 350 year old joke will continue. So when you are crossing streets here in Rome, it's good to know that pedestrians do have the right of way. So the people who are walking across the street are allowed to do that but you have to enter them with confidence and it's good to kind of like signal maybe down here like 
just to show, yes, I am crossing this street. For me, that's really good to know because I'm always curious, like, oh, is, is that allowed here? And yes, pedestrians do have the right of way in Rome. It's today a church. It's been a church for 1,400 years. It's one of the largest concrete domes in the world. And it's got an oculus on the inside of the dome that allows natural light to pour in so that it can be totally naturally lit. Okay, you don't need any artificial light in there. So that was the Pantheon, and it is free to the public. You can walk into it. It's open till about 6.30 p.m., you know, look into that. Um, but the best time of day to go is around two or three because there's a shaft of light that actually lights the whole interior. At that hour, you can see it the best. All right, we are saying goodbye to John. He was an amazing tour guide. Bye, ciao means goodbye and hello. So, you can get ciao. both of those in. Ciao, hello, and goodbye. Ciao, ciao. ciao. Or you can say ciao, ciao, all right? Ciao, ciao. And on the phone, you go ciao, 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 ciao. ciao. <laughs> well, listen at times, they'll do that. They say it five or six times. Ciao, 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 ciao. <laughs> The golf cart tour was really great. It was a warm day and being on the golf cart actually felt really nice because you had a breeze coming through. So anytime we were jumping on the golf cart, I was like, yes, <laughs> because it felt really good. I didn't have a need for air conditioning, but the breeze felt really, really nice. Also, having somebody who could really one-on-one -on -one address all of the kids' many, many, many kind of strange questions was such a great perk. We go places all of the time and I'm often like searching on my phone for answers because they're asking me interesting questions but I would never know them. So having someone who could really answer their questions was great. I have really talkative, inquisitive kids. Bailey, Jacob, Parker were, <laughs> were quizzing John the whole time and he had an answer for everything and that was really cool too because I was like, yeah, he's not gonna know this. Because they'd be like, why is there a hole there? Or why is that rock like that? And he'd be like, well, you see, da 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 da, and he'd know all the answers. And he was really patient and really well spoken. I loved learning about all the cool history. I think my favorite place was looking through the hole because it looked so pretty outside. That is such a good way to see Rome because it is such a big city. There's all these little streets and offshoots and stuff, and you could walk it. But I don't think you could see that much in that amount of time by walking it. And as Jessica said, it was really hot out today and it felt so nice to just zip through. The golf cart, by the way, gets you to the place you want to go pretty quick, but it's not so fast that you miss everything. I feel like when you're in a car, you're isolated. You don't really like see everything that there is to see. I felt like we were going at a nice pace on the golf cart and we actually got to see the things that we were passing as well as talk about them and hear the history, hear the sounds of the street. It was so cool. And what a great way to start things off. It was one of the first things that we've done here and it gave us kind of the layout of the city. I like the piazza with the octopus fountain and I loved uh, seeing all the ice cream shops. All the ice cream shops. Did you like sitting in the back or the front better? Back, because it goes faster than the front. Duncan's just fully immersing himself in the culture. your first pizza in Italy. Here's my pizza. So one thing I've been meaning to talk about when traveling with children, especially to a new country, is to relax about your expectations. It really helps if you don't expect new places to completely match where you're from. So for example, yesterday the car seat didn't look like how I expect a car seat to look. And then today, Duncan's high chair, he doesn't have any straps. In California, if we're eating and we get a high chair that does not have any straps in it, I get surprised and a little annoyed and I, I feel like my baby isn't safe. Here in Italy, they offered us one and I, was, I just felt like really glad they had a chair at all. And I don't know, like I don't know why I necessarily like have different expectations, but I think you should, and I think it makes the trip more um, pleasurable. If you're not expecting everything to be exactly like where you're from. What's happening? Hailing. It's hailing. 
Did it hurt you? Every time I try and leave, giant pieces of ice fall from the sky. You see all the ice? You see it? You gonna try and go for it? You're braver than I am. Here we go. We're actually right across the street from our hotel, but I'm still using a backpack just in case. Here we go. Almost there. Made it. That was exciting. Was that exciting for you? Yeah. Look at all that hail. Oh my goodness. I don't know if I've ever been in a storm like that. Ever. You wanna go outside? No, we're not going outside. It's too hailey. So now we are having rolling blackouts, which is, this is very exciting. We are fighting over who gets the vlog because this is so exciting. So we are having massive hail, which I know to some people might happen a lot, but to us it never happens. Like I've never seen hail bigger than like this big and it only happens like every couple years in California. And it's like, random like this big chunks of hail it was 85 degrees earlier today when we went on a tour of rome and everything was like hot i'm living for this like we never get anything like this the lights keep going off in our hotel like hotels are supposed to be impervious and the lights are just going off. Like multiple times they've gone off. And the kids are like screaming whenever it happens. It's amazing. As soon as we got back into the hotel from the cold weather, I made them like this giant warm bubble bath. So they're in the bath right now and the lights are going out on them. They're like, ah! <laughs> it's amazing. Best day of my life. You guys can't hear it, I don't think, but there's like, um, there's a bunch of thunder going on. Hard to tell, but the lights just went out. Whoa. There they go again. You kids okay? Yes. Are you having fun? Yeah? You playing with the toothbrush? Ooh, a good brush in your teeth. Look at that. Those are really nice, Bailey. Beautiful. How is it? Yummy. So I ordered the salmon, and it's in the shape of a rose. I have never seen that before. Okay, Parker, what'd you get here, buddy? I got pizza. Pizza Romana. Pizza Romana. And look, it has anchovies. Jacob, what'd you get? I need the apples. Bailey's got some gluten free. Oh. All right, we've had a great day here in Rome. Definitely be sure to check out Live Italy. All the info is down in the description box. We had such an amazing tour today. They were so helpful in like picking out restaurants and, and giving us advice on things to do in the city and it's just been awesome. And actually, somebody just asked me on Twitter whether a Rome would work with a stroller or mobility issues. And I actually feel like the golf cart tour would be a really good solution because you're getting in there and getting to get up close to a lot of the big places, but you don't have to worry about a, a device for mobility. As you saw today, there are just these cobblestones, these like really special stones in all the streets, in almost all the streets. I do think having a stroller or a wheelchair would be difficult. I would never say something was impossible, but I do think it would be difficult. And I think that the golf cart's a good solution. Like you could come in with your wheelchair or with your stroller, but just not use it for the day and go on the golf cart tour. But it's only our first day. I'll keep you updated. Hi. Let's talk about what we learned today. We learned that Parker's gonna lose count on the Spanish steps, even if you're holding his Acropot seed for him. We learned that if you're thirsty in Rome, all you have to do is find a big nose to stick your finger up. And finally, we learned that Duncan 
is a big fan of Italian food. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. <laughs> you sing with me. Yeah. Okay, do it. Woo! Are you ready? Well, the...